Hi, my name is Adolfo Neto. I'm a professor at the Federal University of Technology, Paraná, here in Curitiba, Brazil. And I'm also a member of the Education Working Group of the Erlang Ecosystem, Ecosystem Foundation. And today I'm going to talk about this. It's First, let me introduce you. This is Elixir Weekly. Get your Elixir news in a new weekly email. There are some Elixir newsletters. I believe I have written a post on Medium some time ago about Elixir, Erlang and Bing newsletters. I'm going to leave the link on the description of the video. There is Elixir Radar, Elixir Digest. And here is Elix Elixir Weekly. And there is here this week in Elixir. I want to go to this post. Elixir's Four Loops Go Beyond Comprehension by Vinicius Negri Solo. So it's, it's not new. It's from November 10, 2020. Elixir's for loops have so many features in a single statement that it's worth it's worth it to review the major ones. So let let me open here uh, an IX. So the, the basic use of Elixir Elixir for loops. I believe it's, it's is it like this? I don't remember. Ah, I forgot that I have to put this. W what happens if I ask? Oh, here I that there is the correct syntax. See, I wanted the simplest possible list comprehension. Yes, it's something like this. So what I want to do is something that resembles a regular programming language for, for, for any from n from 1 to 10 just return n and it generates a list that's why it's called a list comprehension so um, in this post we will dig the, in the for loop by covering mapping filtering and reducing so elixir's for loop is not new to me i have been using it for years and i didn't know about the reduce option this made me take a break to look into the docs again and review what's possible to do with this loop to start with elixir's for loop is also known as comprehension the same word is used in other languages such as Python or Haskell to describe a language syntax sugar for applying some common operations to a list. Comprehension in Elixir takes the form of a for loop. So if you may come from a language that does not have comprehension, you may think that a for loop would only iterate over an enumerable but it's much more than that. So mapping, the basics of Elixir's comprehension is to map over an enumerable. So this is an example, it just goes to from one to five and multiplies by two. This could be done, let me clear here. We could have something like this, enum.map, one two three four five f n of x x times two and so you see it's exactly the same result this means to iterate over each value of a list and build some other value with that the return will be a list of built values here the same thing but what's the difference here ah here they use uh, a range, here a list, here it's a, 
a binary. Yes. And this binary, they add one, so becomes B, C, the, the next letter. The element list part of the for loop is called in Elixir as generator. And it means that for each element in the list, it will assign a variable and, a, and process the do block with that. So we can have multiple generators and have a Cartesian product. Elixir allows, let me just, just sorry. I'm going, I don't know if everyone remembers the Cartesian product, but I have first to fix it. Um, we, we can do 22. Yes. So Cartesian product, if you don't remember, is it's this. If you have two sets, A equals to 1, 2, 3, and B equals to A, B, C, and the Cartesian product of A and B is uh, 1A, 1B, 1C, then 2A, 2C, and finally 3A, C. So in this case, we have three here, three here. The Cartesian product has three, nine elements. Okay, let's go back to what we were. So it's possible to do that. In, let's let me do exactly the same thing here. So if I have four x from one, one, two, three, y from um, a, b, c, and do what? x, y. See, exactly the same thing. Here they just used, they created a string, he created a string, yes, I can say they. So it uses a situ, I don't like situs for, because this situ, this is so simple, why we do that? Yes, it's easy to type, but it's much more easier to understand when you see something like this. Okay, the result is a flattened list of all possible names and surnames. This is a very outstanding feature of the language. Filtering. Filtering in Elixir for loops can be done in two different approaches. Filtering by pattern matching. Filtering by pattern matching seems to be an unknown feature for some Elixir devs that I've talked about to in the past in elixir most of the place that we can use a pattern matching the default behavior for a no match is to raise an error so what's he doing here um, there is this list people with some maps right no this is is this a this is a map okay oh sorry and then I can do M of name. No, I, I believe I can do something like this. Yes, M dot name and M dot active. And why do I say this is a map? Because if I do something like this, you see there is you can have two names, two different names. Okay, and what does it do here? First, it defines this variable people, it assigns it to a list of maps, and then for each element, 
So the, the pattern matching is here. So instead, uh, it, it, it could have done something like this for x in people x dot name. See the same result. Oh, it's not the same result here. Why? Because ah, because it only sele ah, that's good. It only selected those names for from elements of the list where active is true. That's great. So this is what's called filtering in a for. Yes, here he explains a similar approach could be done using guard clauses. I believe this one is better. Here the same thing, but using a conditional when active true and it only selects John. Filtering by truthiness. To explain this session, we need to cover another part of the for loop in Elixir. For loop syntax in Elixir. Elixir allows non-generator clauses in the for loop. Okay, yes, it's like the, the when here. And it's called filters. Let me try it again here. Uh, and will this work as it did so for x in people when x active is true return x name so these are called filters because the behavior is to evaluate each filter and if a filter returns new or false, then the value is, is discarded. But filters can also be a way of to destructing element values or building partial values for the for loop processing. Here it selects only... Ah, there is a, there's a different list of people here. And then after that, he goes and... selects only those people in the list whose age is greater than 40, which is Patricia. As you can see, person.age bigger than 40 is being evaluated for each person if this filter is falsy and then the person is discarded as we didn't as we did with John because he's just too young for the example. Filters are regular elixir statements, so you can also use the, elix the equals operator. Um, for person, mm, this what this is doing? Just uh, pattern matching with name, getting the name instead of doing person dot name you do a pattern matching and put the name of the person the variable name this also means that a known match in a filter will raise a match error what's what's is this doing let me understand for person which comes from people let me remind what people is uh, if there is, it tries to match person that comes from people, which is this map, tries to to match person, which is a map with the field's name, age, and active, and tries to find the 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 wrong name key. As there is no wrong name key, it's it's a wrong match, a match error, and then it returns nothing okay finally just a reminder that the following destructuring of active equals person active has the implicit behavior of removing that person from processing processing so watch out for this
Yes, because only active people will be active true people will be selected by this clause here. And what's the difference? Ah, here. The difference is that we don't we don't select, we don't filter. Here we filter those where this expression returns true or better, non falsy. Here we don't filter anything. So name is name status is person active. Order matters, of course. Most most things in Elixir, the order matters. This section is to highlight that the order of generators and filters matter. So in this case, ah, but this is ugly. You shouldn't include an IO inspect here. But of course, this is only for debugging. And one, two, five, six, one, five, one, six, two, five, two, six. Why? What's the difference here? Oh, of course, because when when it gets here, it's it's doing I twice. Um, we you, sh you shouldn't do that unless you want to debug something. And the i value is inspected four times. This happened because both i and j gener generators happened before the IO inspect. Even though I am not using the value j in the inspection, the generations generators are expanded already by the Cartesian product properties of multiple generators. Let's keep that in mind. Unique. You can send an unique true option to the loop and it's pretty straightforward. So we have many repetitions here. If you do unique, and that's it. That's good for Cartesian products. Let's go to my one of my first examples, the Cartesian product. Where can I find uh, here? So this is the Cartesian product. If I do Type here unique dot true. Oops, where do I unexpected keyword? Well, maybe I have ah yes, I have to include a comma. And if instead I had one and See here, see, I have three elements here, three elements here, and one, two, three. No, it's uh, uh, the problem. Yes, the only way to here now I, I have removed the repetitions from CC without unique. I would have this one, two, three, nine elements with unique one, two, three, four, five, six elements. Okay, into. Oh, that's good. Another useful option is to use into, and it works similarly to enum into. Great. Uh, I have people. Let me put this up. And what we would do here, uh, it will add it to a map. Is that? Yes. And this is kind of strange because you're getting people from this map. No, this is a list of maps and you are creating a new map where the key is going to be the name and the value is going to be another map so that if we had three people here 
for instance, if we had this, let me just and suppose we we had this. Three Patricias. Oh, I forgot the, to to add a comma. You have two Patricias, and now I want to create a map. Ah, it's easier if I cop and paste this. Okay, now I have only one Patricia here, and it's the last Patricia, the one where active is true. Okay, and here I can create uh, a binary. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, four. Now I'm getting the binary value, 48 and adding it to a string. Reduce. I finally learned this week about the reduce option. The usage is very intuitive, but it comes with a new syntax element to this statement, the ACC arrow. So here we have another people list. people John Smith John Williams Patricia Jones and I I also didn't know this one so for each person in the people list you have to reduce it to a map where you have an accumulator so if for where you update the accumulator so this is going to receive the map initially it's going to be the empty map but after you add the first john so when you receive the empty map you add the same thing that you did before the person name is the key and what else the person name is the key the person is part of the list and what's this? Ah, this is a function that in case, I believe it's this. Uh, as we can see, the ACC act as an anonymous function without the FN and words. The ACC syntax is not too much to digest, but it certainly adds to the syntax complex of the for loop. Uh, I believe what it's doing here is this function. So ah, let me just help map update because I really don't. Oops, update. I really don't remember what map updates do. It's a map, a key, a default value existing value if key is present then the existing value is passed to fun and this result is used as the update value of the key if key is not present the foe is uncertain okay so suppose we have an um, I map update and the key is Adolfo and the default value is one and the function is fn of x x plus one and yes the key adolfo is not found oops what okay so if the there is an empty map and i I add Adolfo one okay but what what if I do this if, if there is already Adolfo uh, 
Mm -hmm. So the function adds to the value. So if I have a map where the Adolfo is associated to two, if there is already a Adolfo, I add one, otherwise I add, no, yes. If there is no Adolfo, the value is going to be one. If there is Adolfo, I'm going just to add one to the current value for Adolfo. Here, the function is a, uh, it just adds a new person to the list. So that's why in this case here, um, the first time John appears, this one is added. This is the result. The second time, is, is it the John? No, sorry, it's John Smith. The first time John Smith is added. The second time John Williams is added. So the first time it uses this, and the second time, John Williams, it's going to use this function here. For Patricia, it only happens one time, and it's, it adds the default value here. Um, okay, I, I really didn't know this, this reduce option for for loops. My question is, why use this when you have enum reduce? I'm not sure it's a good idea. Okay, number of iterations when working with enum, we usually run more than one operation to a list, so we end up iterating over the list multiple times, basically once per enum function applied. So let me see what happens here let me clear a new people list okay and uh, here it's using enum oh so yes it's using enum oh but this is there is a problem here i have to use my secret place here and because when you 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 do this on ix, you have to do either do something like this, or you do something like this, right? Let me see if this work. No, it doesn't work. But uh, you see, I can do this. And then Ix is going to expect, it's going to expect, no, it's going to wait for, for more information. For, for instance, for this, I can copy that. And this, um, let me add all the rest. So let me see what's happening here. I get people. People is the list of maps with John, true, Kevin, true, Patricia, false, Jennifer, true. And I filter only those which are active. And here it's using this ugly notation, but okay. Now I, after this first one, see, if I do this and then this, I will have only three. And let me just, yes, if I, now I have only this, V60. If I get V60 and pipe it to enum map, Uh, what's happening here? It, do, it doesn't work this way. Oh, it works this way. So if I get this, so now I have um, I mapped it to a new list which contains tuples, tuples with the name 
in the map. And finally, I get all these tuples, which are in line 62. So I get all these tuples and add them to a V62 pipe to a map. Oh, two pipes, it's wrong. So now I have what I had before. In this case, we we're iterating over the, over the people list three times, but when we work with a for loop, we can reduce that to a single iteration. We could rewrite the same code as... Uh, so, this answer my question. Why use this when you have enum? Because it, it's going to iterate less. So, the same result here with a for loop where it selected only those people, those persons were, which are active and add them to a map. Great example. This is a performance boost for free. Conclusion. Elixir's comprehension is a great tool to use when working with enumerables. It brings features, for example, filtering, mapping, reducing, unique, lists and unique lists in a single statement it also it's also possible to work with multiple generators if the app needs that and the cartesian product is a very elegant and very handful approach to that the syntax for the for loop can be a bit more complex if compared to regular for loops from another programming languages to be fair that's very much expected as elixir's comprehension puts so many features all together in a single statement yes this this example the, this post here shows that there's a lot of things to do here and if you want to learn more you can find documentation for kernel 4 all the options here and okay thank you very much um, Vinicius Negrisolo who is this guy here oh he's on Twitter he wrote some blog posts here let me oh he's from Sao Paulo he's Brazilian too I'm going to follow him he's, he's on github and that's the end thanks Elixir Weekly for this work of selecting some blog posts and some and I'm going to say that I'm the, one of the hosts of this podcast in Portuguese Elixir in Foco uh, I want to say that at least two conferences are going to happen this year Elixir Conf EU 9 and 10 September 2021 Elixir Conf USA is going to happen when? October 12, 13 in person, virtual 14, 15 and I believe there, there's also some code bean conferences oh, there's code bean conference in Brazil I'm going to be there 5 and 6 of August and there is also some code being conference all over the world from code sync uh, I don't know when it's going to be the next one but they have lots of conferences yesterday I was at a conference by Erlang Solutions but, uh, but it was not a code being it was wrapped MQ. You see Code Bean Brazil, Elixir Conf EU, Code Bean America. Ah, yes. So in November, there's going to be Code Bean America. And maybe if everything's uh, in May 22, Code Bean Stockholm is going to be back. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in the next video. Bye bye.